One big feature I've been planning for a while is unlockable content as a prize whenever you win a season of Galactic Chef. So before I add more content to the game, I wanted to get that unlock system figured out. To start, I set a few goals. I want to give the player a choice between a few items each time, but I don't want players to just be able to reload a save at the last level and keep unlocking new content just by playing the final challenge over and over. I also wanted to make sure when you run out of stuff to unlock, you don't feel cheated. Mostly that means warning you in advance so you don't get to the end and suddenly realize you've won nothing. But I also want to keep adding new stuff in updates, so if you do keep playing with nothing left to unlock, I want to save your unlocks for later. So I decided when you're down to the last item to put a message right on the unlock screen letting you know you can just click done and there will be a button on the main screen to come back and unlock stuff later. And if there's nothing left at all, there's a slightly different message. But perhaps most importantly of all, I want to make sure every unlock feels worth it, so I've given a lot of thought to what kinds of prizes I can offer and how they can affect the game in interesting ways. But in this video I want to focus on the unlock system itself. I recently added a player profile class for saving and loading your options and remembering your portrait customization, so this seemed like a natural place to store unlocks as well. Every item you unlock is tied to the random number generation seed for the season you just played, so if you win again with the same seed it won't unlock anything new. I'm also displaying a prominent warning if you try to start a new game with a seed you've already used, because again, I don't want it to be a disappointing surprise. I'm identifying unlocks by a path and file name rather than an ID because I don't want IDs to change when I add things or possibly collide if I open this up to Steam Workshop in the future. That means each unlock is going to be represented by some type of file, and I'm actually generating a list of unlockables just by scanning directories. For judges, I've converted the file with all their commentary lines to JSON to make things more consistent. And for plates, I'm also using JSON to define a set of plates and their attributes. I didn't think unlocking just one plate at a time was enough of a prize. For equipment, I'm using a Godot scene file just because there are too many little unique things I want to do differently depending on each specific item, and building a scene in the Godot editor gives me a lot of flexibility. For kitchen skins, for now I'm just using PNG files and putting a dash base on the main image and a dash rack on a secondary image for the ingredient rack because that needs to draw on top of other items. For all of these unlock types, I'll also need a preview image to show on the unlock screen. So let's step back and see how all this is put together. When a profile is instantiated, I start by scanning directories for all the default unlocked content, everything you get from the start before winning anything. Then if we're loading an existing profile, I'm loading two things, a map of seeds to unlocks for everything you've got already, and a list of seeds for wins that you haven't spent yet. Now whenever a game needs a list of equipment, plates, judges, etc., it asks the profile what's available in that category. This is where the default unlocks and the win unlocks get merged into one list. It's a little wasteful since I could pre-merge these, but it's such a low frequency operation that it doesn't matter, and it means I don't have to restart the game when I tweak things in development. Every time I show the unlock screen, the directories get rescanned, and I can even hand edit the profile's JSON file to give myself more credits or reset my unlocks. Of course, players could cheat this way too, but if someone wants it badly enough to figure out how, I'm not going to try to stop them. So the other big piece, of course, is actually unlocking things. When you win, I start by putting the RNG seed in your unused list, and immediately save the profile, so that if you close the game or have a power outage, you haven't lost anything. Then I reset the random number generator, scan for unlockable content, and shuffle. By resetting the RNG with the seed being used, I make sure you'll always get the same options for the same show seed, so deferring your unlocks doesn't mean you get a new random set to pick from, unless new content gets added. And of course, once you've made your pick, the show seed gets removed from the unused list, the unlock is added to the map, and the profile gets resaved. And that's it! except for one problem I realized a bit late. See, as a shortcut for save and load, I'm not actually saving all the procedurally generated content. I'm just saving the seed and regenerating everything on load. The only game state I really need to save is which contestants are still left in the game and how many challenges you've gotten through. That's why it can't save any progress during a challenge. It'll take a lot more work if I want to actually save all the voxels and reaction properties and everything which I might end up doing eventually anyway, but for now, save and load depends on the procedural content generation being repeatable and matching every time for a given seed. But if you throw a new unlocked ingredient into the mix, that changes everything. Suddenly loading an old save will give you a new set of ingredients and challenges. Except, luckily I can work around this for now just by including your unlocks in the save file. The trick is I need to overwrite the unlocks in your profile, but without overwriting your profile. So it's made things look a little bit hackier for now, but this will likely change in the future. The other problem is I wanted people to be able to share their screenshots with seed information so that other people can play the same challenges with the same ingredients, but unlocks sort of break that. 
I was thinking I could minimize the effects of unlocks on procedural generation if I only add unlocked content at the end after everything else is generated, but that would mean you'll never get a spotlight ingredient challenge with an unlocked ingredient, and that feels like too much of a sacrifice to me. So my tentative plan is to just add an indicator to that screenshot banner saying how many unlocks are in play, and also an option to disable all unlocks if you want to do speedruns or competitions or anything else where you might want to make sure you're on a level playing field with everyone else. But that's something I'd really like to hear feedback on. I'm assuming most players won't care. Most people won't be sharing seeds or trying to play the same seasons, but anything that gets people more engaged with the game is great news for me, so I want to support that however I can. And that's all for this week, but as always, it really helps me out if you hit the like button, spread the word, and subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, thanks for watching.